Today I wanted to take a second and talk about getting an acoustic cello tone out of your electric violin. I've got a five string here. This is the NS Design NXT. It's the mid-level model and I've just got normal strings on it, not the octave strings or anything. So what we're going to be doing here, this is a very normal electric violin and we're going to be digitally manipulating it through effect pedals and uh, impulse responses and we're going to get it to sound as close to an acoustic cello as we can. This might be useful uh, to a lot of people if you're you know, the only violinist in a band, if you are even a violinist in a rock band. Um, chances are you're the only one and uh, maybe you've got some ground to cover uh, with with different sounds and the great thing about digital gear is that we have easy access to all this stuff so I'm going to be talking a little bit about the different ways you can achieve this uh, what some of the trade-offs are with uh, cost you know more expensive gear versus less expensive gear and what all your different options are for getting an acoustic cello tone I use the Line 6 Helix, uh, the HX Stomp, it's the smallest one in the Helix family. I use that for EQ, compression, uh, impulse loading, and, and a bunch of other things. I'll explain a little bit about that. If you are a Helix user yourself, you're welcome to steal the settings that you'll see on the screen in a second and use them for yourself, tweak them, and make them work the best for you. Uh, but if you're not a Helix user, I think this video is still going to be very widely applicable to different products, whatever you decide on using yourself. What you're looking at right now is the editing software for the Helix units. Uh, it's on my computer and you can see all the different effects that I have lined up here. The first two are uh, effects that I use on every single electric violin preset that I make. So if you've seen my other videos, uh, you've seen these before. But if you haven't, maybe you'll want to check those videos out. I'll talk a little bit about them just because this is a very inclusive video. I usually like to put a compressor at the start of my chain. And that's because uh, I think with acoustic instruments, you have a very wide dynamic range and we are just our technique to, to get the most dynamics out of the instrument. You know, you play a little bit slower with the bow and you dig in more to get a louder sound, vice versa for a softer sound. On electric instruments, that really doesn't make much of a difference. Digging in, uh, you don't get that much of a, of a big dynamic difference. Instead, what you get is a drastic tonal difference. So a very big change in tone. And I like to use the compressor. Uh, to limit the dynamic range of the instrument so that I can dig in and get a more aggressive sound or lighten up and go for a very soft sound but it doesn't affect what the audience is hearing. I'm not going to disappear in the in the mix of a band with a drum set and everything. So that's my philosophy on the compressor. You can see the settings here. Generally I like to mix in a little bit of the dry signal. You'll see it's 75% compressed, 25% dry and these are the parameters I find that work best for um, electric violins you'll see a stomp, sw stomp switch 2 rating over here. And that's because when I hit stomp switch 2, some of the parameters change. I've got a very uh, much more heavy compressed signal now, and this will work great for uh, pizzicato. I'll play through everything a little bit later once I get through this. Um, this is my standard EQ for electric string instruments. I like to cut a lot of the low end response that uh, we're getting a lot of bow noise, a lot of very low bass drum range rumble when the, the bow is being drawn back and forth across the strings when it's changing bow strokes. So that's with the compressor, or sorry, with the EQ. And this is with the EQ bypass. You'll need good headphones to hear this or a speaker system with a subwoofer. And really you could ask the sound guy to, to do that for you, but I just like to have everything built in there in case there is no sound guy or you're doing a very quick festival changeover and you don't have time to get picky. So this is my built-in EQ and you can see that as well with the compression change. Some parameters here with the mids change and that's to help out with the pizzicato sound again. The next piece of the puzzle is going to be the impulse response and this of course is the most important one because this is where we're actually getting the tone shaping uh, that transforms your violin, electric violin, into something that resembles an acoustic cello. Uh, basically how this works is it's going to be a very crude definition so people that actually understand this please don't kill me. Uh, but we've got a very short reverb signal. Basically an impulse response of a cello is somebody tapping on a sample cello that they have uh, with different mics set up around the area. You get a a frequency spectrum uh, kind of idea of how the, the cello produces sound and amplifies itself and you get a very specific EQ curve. It comes in the form of a, of a short reverb signal, a couple milliseconds, you don't, you don't hear it at all, you don't hear the delay. So in the IR, I like to cut the lows a little bit and the highs, there's nothing useful above 15 kilohertz or below 120 hertz. And then I leave the level here to match unity as if I were 
bypassing the pedal. So 13, you'll see stomp switch three here. This changes, I leave stomp switch three open uh, in case I need a solo boost. So there's a five decibel solo boost there. Moving on here, we've got a volume block. This is how I make up for the fact that I don't really have much control over the dynamics of my instrument with my hands. I like to use an expression pedal and kind of back off the volume. Anywhere from completely silent to full out. And usually when I'm playing, I just leave it at 100%. If I need to back off a little bit in a very quiet section, then I'll back off with the volume pedal, usually only around a 70% or so. And then just a very basic chamber reverb always helps. People are used to hearing violins, cellos in acoustic space with a little bit of natural reverb. So I put a, a bit of a stereo, uh, very light verb here. You can see the settings here. Mix is very low. The, the decay is plenty there. So if you were in a big hall, the reverb signal is going to last for a very long time, but it's not too present in the mix, only at 28%. And then finally, this is always on this chorus. Uh, chorus effect, I leave the mix again very low. This just kind of gives it a little bit th of a more th more thicker sound. Uh, talking about the, the octave down effect that I'm using, of course you can use some stuff in the Helix. Uh, we've got some pitch shifting stuff. Of course that sounds good, but if you want to play double stops... So with different multi-effects, uh, there's big benefits to having a multi-effect. Everything in there, you can manipulate it all together with more complex routing and, and you know experiment with stuff, save presets. But there's going to be some drawbacks. In the case of the Helix, they don't really have a good pitch shifting um, mechanism in here. So to make up for that, I have the Electroharmonics pitch fork on my board at all times. There's also another common option, which is the, the Super Octave OC3 by Boss. A little bit more of a warm sound. I'll show you what that sounds like just so you know for yourself in case you're thinking of different options here. All right, so here's my dry signal, no octave effect on it, and we're, we're back in the first preset here again. Here's the pitchfork, what I was using before. And then the OC3. This is another pedal that doesn't track polyphonically, so if you're trying to play chords, it's going to get a little confused. Uh, the pitchfork, I think, for the violin is a better option, but the OC3 can be found very, very cheap as well. Another octave effect to consider is the Electroharmonics Pog. They have a couple different versions of it, and it's the pitchfork engine. It's the same thing. Less options on it. Another honorable mention would be the Digitech Drop. Uh, Digitech Whammy has the same engine in it. The Electroharmonics Pog has the same engine as the Electroharmonics Pitchfork. I actually own the Nano Pog myself. Uh, so pretty similar pedals, just a little bit different functionality, but they're both useful, I think. In my opinion, the Pitchfork is the best one for violin. Now, if you're a Helix user and you're going to use this preset, just know that the impulse response in this isn't free. You're going to have to track down uh, the website for Three Sigma Audio. I'll make that easy for you. Actually, I'm going to put the link in the description. So uh, check out the link if you're interested in picking up the impulse response because you'll need it for this preset. However, uh, you might want to jump back a couple videos of mine. I'll leave a link up here if I remember to put it there. And uh, you, you'll be able to see some different cello, uh, free cello presets that I made. And they're not using cello impulses. They're using violin and viola impulses. Um, so they're not going to sound as good, but it's entirely free. You can experiment, play around a little bit with it. And if you think you want to upgrade and go for a much more authentic cello sound, then uh, you, can, you can buy into the IR. It's only like 15 or $10 or something like that. So I'll give you a little bit of a playing sample here with the pitchfork and my most ideal cello setup here. I also should mention, by the way, that I'm blending my dry signal with the impulse response. Sorry, this is... I'm all scattered right now. Uh, so the A level here is going to be this. We're at negative 8 decibels. And then coming in this direction is the B path with the IR. And that's at 0 decibels. This is just how I like to blend things. Okay, and as a final note, if you're looking to make all these parameters yourself, you're going to need to edit some stuff with the foot switches. The reverb is bypassed if you want with foot switch 1. And then here's all the parameter changes with the compressor.
This is for the pizzicato, and I'll give you a sample of that too. Foot switch three was the boost that I talked about. Back to foot switch two. And then the volume effect is on uh, bypass with foot switch five, and then the expression pedal slot two. All right, so I'm gonna hit the compressor. I'll give you a pizzicato sample. And without the compressor, you'll hear the pizzicato. With the compressor again. A little bit of a difference, right? Without. With. Now we'll compare this preset to the, the ones from before, a couple videos ago, with the free violin impulse responses. So again, it's not with the cello. This is the original one. One last time. Switching to the uh, the one with the viola impulse response now. Turn off the pitch block again. And lastly, back to the best one. So there's my, my general thoughts on getting an acoustic cello tone with your electric violin. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out some of the other ones that might interest you. I talk about uh, my other presets I have here, get an acoustic violin tone out of your electric violin. Uh, these are pretty good presets that are totally free. The impulse responses are public domain that I found. And of course the viola one as well. And then some other stuff here with clean a little bit of overdrive and then very high gain tones for for contemporary rock violin playing and also there's going to be a video i'm going to link all these up here you'll see them pop up with some ambient presets that i created specifically around the violin uh so if you're interested in checking one of those out make sure you do that and uh thanks for watching anyway i hope it helped you a little bit see you in the next video